Good morning. Guess what? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be rejoicing and be glad in it. Come on. The last time I spoke, I spoke on, I gave my testimony. I spoke a bit on creation, the formation of the universe, earth, the sun, and how they all mingle together to become God's creation. Today, I'm going to the other end. Now, Brendan, last week you mentioned something about that size. What is it? A mustard seed. Right. So from that enormous first creation, God also made a mustard seed. And it's that small that it's very hard to see. It's not the smallest thing, of course, in God's kingdom. There are things, bacteria, which you can't see. But visibly, a living thing, which it, that is, is um, absolutely amazing, isn't it? And within that little thing, it's alive, we know that, it's impregnated with God's design. When that's nurtured and planted and grows up, it becomes a magnificent thing. But the Bible tells us that birds will even grow in its branches. It won't grow into a monkey. It won't grow into a rose. It will grow into a mustard. That's amazing. So we can actually say it's programmed. It's like a microchip. So God actually was the first producer of microchips. And it's funny, my mind wanders a lot. And we talk about Steve Jobs and... Um, Bill Gates, all those people involved in making chips. I don't know if they did, but anyway. And I was thinking, it's got nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about, but I thought it's quite funny, actually. Um, what's the Apple, Apple um, Steve Jobs sign? It's an apple with a bite taken out of it, isn't it? Does that remind you of anything? I don't know. Woo, yes. So really, there's nothing new under the sun, as Ecclesiastes tells us. God is the creator of everything. Now, this mustard seed, in Jesus talks about a mustard seed in reference to the kingdom of God, but mainly about our faith. Now, all of you here today, I know it's a bit light on, they must have heard I was going to speak today, but you're here for a reason. It's a Sunday, it's a day off, but you're here. So every one of you has a modicum of faith within you. How big it is, I don't know. God does. But my job this morning is to help you, show you how to increase it. So it grows from that to a beautiful tree. Isn't that fantastic? Now, there are five main requirements to make this thing grow, right? We need soil. We need water, we need light, we need space, and fertilizer, right? They're the main ingredients to make this thing grow into what we know it's going to be. And um, so how can I relate that to our faith? So I've, I've put together a few little things here. Right. Good soil. Clean water, light, space to grow, fertiliser. So we start first with the soil. Now I refer this, the soil, to our hearts and our minds. We need good, clean hearts and minds, fertile, ready to see, receive what God is going to give us. And um, have we got anything up here? Yes, that's right. And there's a scripture Matthew 13, it's about the sower. And it goes on about the sower goes to sow his seed, some goes on hard ground, the birds come and take it away, some is consumed by weeds, and so on. There it is. Is it there? No? Yes, there it is. Keep rolling. <laughs> anyway, we get to the end, and some of it falls on good soil. And the farmer's crop grew 160, 100 times to what it was. So that 
there is how we should look at our hearts and our minds. Is it ready to receive what God's got to say? Is it clean and healthy? Is there anything in there that's stopping? Like um, holding resentments, anger, unforgiveness. Anything that's a hold on your life. Let it go. Let God. Secondly, clean water. Many times Jesus talks about living water and it refers to the Holy Spirit. When we first come to know Jesus, I did 35 years ago, I was in 1988. I gave my life to Jesus. I always remember the day I was on my knees. <laughs> anyway, and I received, and the scales fell off of my eyes, and I realised that there is a saviour. There's more to life than what we've. Been, but I knew I was 47 years old, by the way. I wasn't a kid, and I put all that stuff behind me. And um, the Holy Spirit came into my life. The scales, the amazing grace. You know the song when I, the hour I first believed. The scales fell off my eyes and I was born again as a new man. So I'm only about 35 years old today. Hey, what about that? Hey, I'm looking at you. Yes, so don't resist the Holy Spirit. Um, have we got another thing up there? The water of the Holy Spirit? Yep. And it says in John 4.13, it's about the, S the Samaritan lady at the well. She was found in sin. She was, you know, she wasn't a Christian, didn't know whatever. And Jesus came up to her and she's talking about water. And he said to her, do you know what the living water is? You can, will never thirst anymore. Everyone who drinks this water will never, will never thirst again. I see he got thirsty again. Will never thirst again. And that's true. Living water, part of, the growth, our growth, same as a mustard seed, our growth. We need that, okay? Don't resist the Holy Spirit. Third, thirdly, the light. Okay, light, I'm going to refer to worship. Do you know why? When this little seed grows, it comes, you know, you've seen those fast action things where things grow and whatever. And there's some flowers and plants at night time close down like this. When the sun comes up, it comes up like this. With a song in my heart, I behold your adorable face. And it's a worshipping, isn't it? And worships the sun, S-U-N, we worship the sun, S-O-N. Isn't that great? And he wants our worship. It's part of our DNA. And there's scriptures there that talk about it. And it says this. What does it say? It says that God loves our worship. Like all good fathers, they do good. Yes, you know, he wants our worship, our praise, our adoration. It's who he is. Why wouldn't we want to do that? The King of kings, the Lord of lords. The great I am. He deserves our praise and worship and make it part of your life each day. Not only Sunday morning with this beautiful Lorena singing and David's. It's fantastic. It raises up those things within us. Don't be afraid to lift your hands. Sing out because he's worthy. He's very, very worthy. Okay, light. What about space to grow? So it's not encumbered by things. It, you know, we need it to branch out. And um, I've referred that space to prayer, right? We've got to find our space and our time to, pr to pray. Now, praying is not a, a chore. It's a thing because if we're growing, we need to pray. He wants our prayers. Are things keeping you from praying, time and the space? We're all so busy today. We've got TVs and computers and this. And is it stopping our growth? I'm including myself in this. I'm not just pointing my finger at you. You know, it's, it's me as well. But we've got to give time to pray. Very important in our, in our growth patterns. We must pray. It's part of those, it's a fundamental of our lives is praying. He deserves it. And it's so easy. I, I was 
talking to Lane today. I remember, I don't know who it is, there's a little lady who used to go to her in, in her cupboard under the stairs and put an apron over her head so it cuts out all the outside. Irene, who is it? Oh, white. Right. right. Yep, yep, I heard that. And she's in there, just her and God, communing. We don't all can do that, but we can pull ourselves aside, give ourselves space, give ourselves time. We can even be in communion with other people and, and have a, a communal prayer, which often happens quite often. But don't forget those little times. And um, do you know, I've got a thing sometimes, I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit, go back a bit. Coincidences. Has anybody had a coincidence in their life? Of course you have. I think, the other week, I was having morning tea with some friends. I came from England, you know, and I'm an old man now. But during, during the war, there was a man called George Formby. He was an entertainer. He was for North Country. He's a very simple man. He used to play his thing. I'm leaning on the lamppost at the corner. Can you do, have you heard of him? Some of you have. But anyway, I was having morning tea, and this lady was saying, my good, very good friend, said, oh, we're going away, and we had to get all our window, windows cleaned. Now, one of his favourite songs is, When I'm Cleaning Windows, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, and she joined in and we sang it. I said, well, I haven't heard George Formby for years. And I haven't since I left England 60-odd years ago. But we just sang and went on. That night on Do You Want to Be a Millionaire, you wouldn't believe, one of the questions was, who was one of the most um, highly paid entertainers in England during the war? And it was George Formby... Arthur Askey and Noel Coward. And do you know what the answer was? George Formby. Now, tell me, I take that as a coincidence. It means nothing, really, in the scheme of things. But I think it's saying, Rod, don't worry, I'm here. You know, it doesn't have to mean anything. But he's just confirming of his role in my life. And it happens. And every time that you say, oh, that was a coincidence, just say, no, it's the Holy Spirit saying... It might, might not mean anything. Sometimes it can be magnificent. But normally it's just a little thing like that. Don't forget. Because he speaks to us in many ways, Holy Spirit. And some of us never find out how. That's one little way he talks to me. He can talk to you through nature, to other people talking to you. Even in your prayer life, he would talk to you. So don't resist. Where was I? Oh, space to grow. <laughs> I get carried away. It's all right. And, um, yeah, but now, I know you're going to have an early day today. Is that all right? You don't mind? Okay. But the last one, the fertiliser. Now, what is the fertiliser? What do we all need? This is your fertiliser, okay? This is where the real growth comes from. It's called the... Bible. If Alan was here, it'd be 66 ancient documents. <laughs> yeah. So, excuse me, I'm getting a bit dry here. Just talk amongst yourselves for a bit. The prayer of a righteous man or woman is powerful, powerful and effective. <clears throat> so each day, find the time, place and space to come and converse with our Father in heaven, just as Jesus taught us to pray. By yourself, with others, be ready at any time to express what's on your heart. I think I've lost a page. Here we go. Fertiliser. Or food. As... The mustard seed needs. To fortify and feed our faith. That's an alliteration, by the way. Fortify and feed our faith. We must get into God's word. So let's start at the beginning. We've got time. Close the doors, please. I'm going to start. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. That's true, isn't it? Have you got Psalm 119? He talks about words. 
It talks about decrees. It talks about law. And it continues to say statutes and precepts. In modern language, it means rules on how we treat ourselves and others and live our lives. This is a road map. It's a song sheet. It's a history book. It's a biography. It's got a family tree. So all your bookshelves that are completely full up with books, throw them all out and just put this on. Because it contains everything that you read and it's good food for you, believe me. But do you know what? Most of all, it's a love story. It's a romance. It's about a heavenly father who loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. Not just to die. He was pilloried. He was spat upon. He was whipped. Anything horrid that you can think of, that's what happened to this man called Jesus Christ who did, went through all of that for you. Do you find that amazing? Do you think you are worthy? God does, honestly. He does. He really thinks that you are worthy. And how's your faith now? How's it going to be this time next week? I've got a bit of homework for you. There's no questions. It's Hebrews. God, look all this stuff here. Hebrews 11. I think it's about 40 sentences to it. Read it and be encouraged. Because we need encouragement. Look at the world today. You know, so, no wonder no, so many people are losing their faith. I've even heard of pastors losing their faith for what's going on, for what other people do. Don't look around. Look up. That's what we designed to do. Look up and worship. You're beautiful, so beautiful. The songs that we sang today, it's, it's, um, we can't deny that, that God loves us. And that is my simple message today. It wasn't very long, but it, you know, I hope that I've encouraged you in your walk. I hope that that little seed will grow to be the person that God has built you for. What do you reckon? Just close your eyes now. I'm going to release you today. Just close your eyes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And they all said, Amen. Don't forget, peace and love. Thank you.